Hi, Chris Pontius here. I thought I'd uh, do a little video and show everybody my art, take a little tour of my studio and show all the uh, art I have that I've done over the, about the last seven years or so. Um, the first thing is, I guess we could save this for last, do the tour, is the Flat Smacker Van, which is uh, I'm really proud of and it's going to be fun to show this and take this out and park at places and see the reaction of some people. Uh, this little uh, table here is uh, some of my goodies uh, that I will have for sale on the site. And these are some decals to put on your window that um, just similar to what I, the marquees that um, I have for sale that are lit up. It's the same font, the same style, and I have them two different, the background and the letters, of course, so you can apply these and put them across the back window of your car if you want to make a statement. And uh, just thought for fun to start off with, this is number two, which was the second model that I made, probably uh, late 2015, uh, the first model Mark Sargent has, um, and this is uh, kind of it's kind of funky and crude compared to all the new ones now. It has a, it had the original uh, cake dome, and I cut the knob off the top. But the um, and it doesn't have the independent sun and movements. It just has the the T bar going around. And there we have the infamous painting looking off into the unknown. Not quite sure what to call that painting yet, but you see it all over uh, YouTube and HBO used it in the documentary ABC News but this is the flat smacker van it's the back of it and uh, my custom-made star ceiling that I uh, made from wood and fiberglass and has the LEDs in it and uh, I uh, did the seats myself. I watched some YouTube videos on how to sew. I had a nice sewing machine, so had to try it. They turned out okay. Bad for an amateur. So I'm going to try to back up some more here. Not running into anything. And then, uh, of course, it says on the top, big sign. So that's the uh, flat smacker van, in case anybody's curious. And yes, I like rainbows. They're very colorful. I happen to like all the colors, and it's very eye-catching, which is the whole idea of this van in the first place. Come over here and got the uh, my uh, name on there. and a model one on each side interesting things happens with the uh, starlight I have it floats inside the dome there very interesting effect so over here is the uh, little model table we got the uh, some pyramids here and things that I used to make before I started making models there uh, organite pyramids made with uh, exotic metals and crystals and shungite and titanium and all kinds of stuff and they absorb radio frequencies and energies and uh, they're great to have around especially with all the 5G stuff that's coming up and a big star so come on around here I guess I can show you the show you the chemtrail buster I made. In uh, instead of using a five-gallon bucket, with uh, I used a acrylic, made an acrylic base, and it has Herkimer diamonds in the tubes, and it's a pretty powerful one. I've gone out there and used it to destroy some chemtrail clouds. It really works. So, um, and it's also being pulsed with the uh, five point the, the human frequency resonance. It's got a pulsed around the coils, so it's pretty powerful. 
This is one of my finer pieces. I'm really proud of this one. I made this, uh, I don't know, a few months ago. Or more longer than that by now. It's number 50, my 50th model. It's 39 inches across here. It's the same size that uh, made one for Robbie Davidson. Similar to this, except this has the city lights in here. And um, I, I really like this just with the, the stars. I mean, the constellations are nice. Right, this is the very first uh, flat sky ceiling model. And it doesn't, obviously, there's no dome. It's just a flat piece on here with the stars in here. And got a little smudge in it. And this is the clock, of course. And I guess I could explain how the clock works because a lot of people are curious and they go, I don't understand how the clock works. Well, the blue lights represent the minutes. It's like a clock except there's no hands. The red lights are the hours. The green lights are the hour markers. So 12, 1, 2, 3, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and so on. This little amber light going around here is the second light. And when it reaches the top up here, all of a sudden another light will be added down here. Boom, there we go. And so as the hour grows, it becomes more bluer as the blue lights add up. And then it reaches the top of the hour. It's kind of like a sonic grandfather clock. And the all the blues will go out and it just be the green lights lit and it starts over again. And the hour will jump to the next hour over here. It's a 12 hour clock. And this actually is the first one I ever did. I never had an oddball size, a 30 inch size map. And it actually had some scratches in it. So I went over it with an airbrush and tried to recreate clouds because the other models don't have clouds. So you can still see the continents. And actually I thought it turned out pretty good. It has a ring of mirrors ran inside to kind of reflect things back in here because the dome doesn't terminate down so you have to step it out to run the sun and moon around. And then it has the backwash light and a really nice tiger eye maple frame. Uh, this is a nice clock. And this right here is the infamous Hidden Lands Beyond model that I had at the first conference uh, hanging behind me vert vertically. Uh, except this one I think I have a nicer frame on here and it's been reworked but I've, I've tested this out for over a year now to I was kind of afraid to sell it to I make sure it was very reliable and working because I engineer a special movement to have four independent movements because supposedly based on the little map that was floating around it showed arrows of which way our sun and goes around and then these other continents outside our world had another sun and moon set that went opposite ours I don't know how true that really is but I just tried to recreate what was available on that little image that was floating around um, that appeared on the internet a couple years ago. So I just traced it off and hand painted a big map. And, did it. and of course the car, the uh, infamous Flat Earth SUV that I started off uh, doing, this used to say Acura across here. So if anybody's interested and wants to change out their car, a lot of the SUVs and new cars will have this chrome strip across the back. Some of them you can do it, some of you can't. This is fairly flat and it had big Acura letters right here and I routed that out and had these little plates uh, laser cut out of stainless and I glued that in there and then back lit it with some red lights and I just thought it was really cool. So this is going to be themed out as the flat it's kind of flat earth medallions on the wheel covers and one on the steering wheel so it doesn't say and then right on the front um, hood it'll have a flat earth medallion so it won't say Acura anywhere. It's a, a flat earth car. I've got a, uh, a, a cute little photographer, Serena, over here is uh, doing all the... Hey, guys. Uh, for the, the photography, by the way. Trying my best here. She's, she's doing good. This is the uh, two-foot uh, infinity map mirror that I made. Just showing the outline of the continents with the ice wall around. And then once I figured out that you could carve and etch any image into the acrylic and then put it in the infinity area, it repeats the image inside there. Beautiful. It's kind of cool. And this has a remote for it to change all the patterns. It does different things. That, you know, it's got a chase light around there. I've kind of got it on the, the rainbow one right now. I think it's just going through the green and the blue, but it does all the colors. Beautiful. Now here's the latest model that I'm really proud of that I, I made custom made for a client in the, uh, the Netherlands. Um, this is wired up uh, for the, uh, the UK or the EU voltage. European voltage. Um, it has a series of push buttons down here to control the different features. You can 
brighten and dim the city lights, the seven different levels, by pushing this button. This changes the, the sun uh, intensity and the moon intensity right here with this button. So you can get them set where you like, because it, sometimes it's, depending on the situation, you want it brighter or dimmer. And then this has the clock, of course, um, the infamous clock. And the unique thing about this model is that the sun works on a 24-hour cycle. So there's a dial in the back, and you can lock the sun in on the time zone where it is in, in real time, which it is now. Um, and as it comes around here, uh, actually it's not in time now because it's been unplugged for a while. It has to stay plugged in all the time to run the sun and moon motor. So I had it unplugged, so it's not <laughs> synced up. And, and so it takes 24 hours to go around, and it's, it, it sits where, where it is in real time. And then the dome turns very, very slow on this one. And it has a remote control with a chase light to change and, and dim the intensity of the stars. You can brighten them up really bright or you know, dim them back down or change the patterns on the colors and do different things to it. it has, it's just like 300 and some odd patterns. You can just lots to play with on the lights. Then it has the buttons to change the time right here to advance the hours and the minutes. And then this is the colors, the button here to change the backwash colors or the patterns it's got a mode or just put it on a solid color that you like and you can brighten or dim that too. And then the main power switch to turn it off or two different power switches to turn off different features for it. So that's how that one works. Here we have uh, a cross clock. I guess you call it. Any image can be put on here. I had a friend that wanted a cross, so I made one for him and I made an extra one because I just thought this was a really cool cross. And then I could put little white lights in the corners. This has the slow fade color changers in here, so the cross is kind of constantly morphing and changing colors. But I can put white ones in here if somebody just wants it white and um, light the image up. And then you can also tell time so it serves two purposes. And uh, this one's pretty simple to do. This one here is another uh, clock with the flat earth, just the map on here. And uh, this is actually kind of has a little bit of an infinity effect because I have a piece of glass on the front. So the lights kind of trail off in there a little bit. Uh, this is just a 12 inch one. Here's another infinity image uh, that has an image on here that's done by another YouTube channel I think created this image right here for his logo and I thought it was really cool so I went ahead and traced it off and I think those really awesome looking fonts right there are kind of spacey looking and and this has a, a, a way to change all the patterns and colors too. Here's another uh, a larger version of the clock like the smaller one down here it's just it's just bigger and then um, there's another clock with the mascot uh, Fepe's uh, face on it. And here is one that's not quite finished yet. I, I guess I could sell them like this if somebody just wanted a simple map with the clock with no frame. Uh, this would be a lot less uh, cost of course just hang here. It's just the edge isn't very finished on this. I was going to put a small dome on this and have the flange of the dome come down here where this is showing through the flange and it's the first one I've done where I put all the lights in the ice wall around the edge. So I thought this was kind of cool. And then I used this uh, dichroic uh, real small pieces of glass in with the paint mix to kind of give the snow a nice little sparkle and a nice little effect with the lights. Nice. And here is a, a cool image that I found online that I I just I call it world scene because you've got the river and the sun and the mountains and the stars and the trees and I just thought it was kind of interesting and it obviously has a another rainbow chase light around there with does all the different patterns too if you just put on solid color or white or whatever cool and uh, that's all my art on this wall well uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun to maybe explain some more about the flat smack rider Sorry, flat Earth Rider. Um, as you call it, Flat Smack Rider. Uh, this was the what was showed on the behind the curve that I was writing in the video. I thought it'd be kind of fun to explain some more things about it. That I spent um, over four years 
the time I dreamt up the idea, uh, made an electric bicycle for a friend of mine, and I thought it would be fun to go bigger with more batteries and a bigger motor. And one thing led to another, so I just kind of started from scratch. And it has a 100 amp hour, 72 volt lithium battery pack down here. It's probably enough to almost move a small car around. And then I made the frame out of aircraft aluminum and uh, bolted it and riveted it together the same way they make airplanes and things. It's very strong. No welds in the frame. And then I wound my own uh, coils, made my own rear motor. The motor is in the wheel. And uh, I did a lot of unique things with this. This is an Ardennes uh, air suspension in the back. Um, and I can turn them. Uh, it has a touch screen to turn the, the wheel. So that's how. So it's up in his electric kickstands. So I can turn those on and show you here. When the kickstands retract, um, oh, and she's sitting down low now. Hang on to it. It weighs about 550 pounds, so it's not very heavy for a chopper of this size. It has a uh, 45 degree rake on the front neck here, and I engineered this is my invention or my idea is an inverted springer. And instead of having the uh, the rods come up with the big springs on the front. I mount the springs and dampener are made up in here and this pulls from the back side in here. So as you can see as I push down on the fender for the suspension how it operates. The fender hugs the tire and it pivots up and down and uh, actually works quite well. It handles really really good. So put the kickstands back down and it has electric retractable kickstands so it uh, Parks itself and sits there, and uh, then I have different little side marker lights, and I have a ground light right here, which I lost the remote for. It's blinking; it's not supposed to be blinking. And then um, headlight, which is probably going to blind the camera. The high beam. That's the low beam. That's the high beam. We don't need that on. And let's see a few other things about it. It. Uh, the top speed, I'm not sure. I've had it up to about 40 miles an hour. This was my first electric motor that I made, so I have to redo it because it's uh, it needs to be adjusted. <laughs> it's my first one I made, so it's a little tricky. And then it has uh, the, this is the front brake actually. When you rotate this forward, all the lights come on and this operates the front brake caliper. And then these operate the uh, regenerative braking so when you want to slow down, and then the other side of the pedal is the rear brake. So it's very quiet, and it has a built-in sound system. Um, forget which switches are which here. And I can go ahead and put it on uh, the disc, or play the radio, or watch movies on it, and all kinds of things. And then also has the backup camera that back here. And so there's no mirrors so you can see everything behind you without I wanted it to be really clean right here so I ran all the internal cables and stuff inside and this is Macassar Ebony by the way which is a very exotic uh, hardwood that's getting more and more rare because it takes hundreds of years for these trees to grow and it's I think the last time I bought a board for this it was a hundred dollars a board foot so one little board that was about this long and about that big was 120 bucks, I think. So I had to carve it out. This is veneer and this is zebra wood here as an inlay accent piece. So it's mostly all done with Picasso ebony with the uh, zebra wood. And then I made my, people call my ram horns handlebars. So, uh, and I put some real crystals here for lights in the end. And there's probably more to tell about it, but I bore you with my motorcycle. This model here um, is my, I think, my 58th model, and it's just a very simple one with no rotating dome and no stars or anything, just a clear dome with a simple uh, dimmer switch for both the sun and the moon and an uh, on off switch right here. Uh, this model over here is the one that's been shown on 
the CBS News and was in the National Geographic documentary on the Salton Sea uh, experiment. And this, uh, this was done with a zebra wood frame and a hand painted map. And this has signatures on the bottom. And Patricia Steers and Mark Sargent's signature on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll turn the flashlight on it. I don't have a flashlight. But uh, this one I have for sale on the site. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my little studio and all the things I have that I've created. I'm looking forward to um, making many more models in the future. Uh, I know I need to make some smaller ones. Just got to figure out a faster way to do it so I can get the cost down on them. But there's a, many hours of work and they're all handmade. And uh, it's just, I'll try my best to get as many as made as possible. So, because the more models that are out there, the better off. You know, eventually I'd like to see all these in the schools, get rid of all the globes and see these in the schools and museums. So, uh, Change, going to change the world one model at a time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> it's all done sanding. Just got to put the bondo on it now. So it's a rough day. It's no fun. This is the dirty part, the dirty work. But got to sand down the old paint before you put the new on it. Time for a shower. Get there. Standing on it all day. weeks of hard work of sanding and fixing dents and going over it and everything else. I got the color and the clear coat on today and um, I'm just going to put all the windows back in and all the bumpers and trim on and then uh, it should look really nice. But I'm tired and it's been a long day and I'm done painting cars for a while.